It's hard to leave the past behind. I do know. All too well. Attain it I shall. For too long have my deeds gone unrewarded. Hola, comrades! Today's topic of interest, the Final Fantasy XII remake. Final Fantasy XII is a bit of a strange animal. Along with Final Fantasy V, it's the entry in the series that most people often forget about. Oh sure, there are some who will tell you it's secretly underrated, but even among the less popular entries in the series, it doesn't have as many defenders as Final Fantasy IX. It's a great game, but it's no masterpiece. There's not much that makes it stand out. It's not like X, which was the last traditional Final Fantasy game in a deep, somber experience, or like XI and XIV, interesting MMORPGs that allowed people to explore the tropes of the series in a new and different way. Or like the Thirteen trilogy, which despite not being good, was at least distinct and worth dissecting. Or like Fifteen, an old-time road trip adventure with four main characters you actually liked and got to know, and also a game that came out of nowhere to redeem the franchise. But what do you think of when you think of Final Fantasy XII? Airships? Sky Pirates? My main problem with this game is how few surprises it holds. This is exactly what a PS2 Final Fantasy game made in the mid-2000s would be expected to be. The world is standard science fantasy, there's political intrigue, but it's nothing revolutionary and honestly kind of dry. The characters are blander than what would be expected for a Final Fantasy game. The whole affair honestly reminds me of a Tales game. Now, that's not an insult. I like a lot of Tales games. It's just that... Okay, take a look at history. Final Fantasy VI was released in 1994, 7 came out in 97, 8 in 99, 9 in 2000, and 10 in 2001. Then there was a 5 year wait for the next mainline, non-sequel Final Fantasy game, and this is what we got. It didn't help that a new generation of consoles was on the way, and the game was swept under the rug, but it didn't deserve that. Regardless of what I said already, the game deserves better than to be forgotten. I'll stand up for it. There's a lot of good in this game. Twelve got rid of random encounters, that plague of RPGs. The world is lush and the battle system is creative. Instead of dropping gill, the game's currency, as in other games, monsters drop loot, which can then be sold. Which may seem like a little change, but it goes to show how the developers were doing what they could to provide a new experience to the player. This game had the rough task of modernizing the series, and it did the best it could. Now, let's talk about the elephant in the room. The Zodiac Age is not a true remake, to be technical. It's a high-definition remaster of 12, akin to what was done with 10. However, it's a little more complicated than that, as it's a remaster of the international version of the game, which was released only in Japan and offers additional content. Nitpicking aside, it is reasonable to say the Zodiac Age is not the same as a fully fleshed out remake, like what Square Enix is currently doing with Final Fantasy VII. This is mostly the same game from over a decade ago, just better looking and better playing. But despite this, it offers a lot of insight into what a good remake of a game entails. Firstly, nothing core to the essence of the game is significantly changed. This may sound obvious, but there are a lot of remakes that try to monkey with the central trappings of the game. They don't get what worked in the original, and they try to change too much. As a remaster, there wasn't much of a chance that the Zodiac Age would go down this road, but the Final Fantasy VII remake could. It's a big project and there's a lot of pressure from fans to change this or that, but these temptations should be mostly resisted. I'm not saying everything about the original game should be considered sacred, and if 12 were to receive a true remake, I'd expect more to be changed, but the essence of the game can't be tainted. For both the Final Fantasy VII Remake and the Zodiac Age, the original games are being updated for the same reason. People cared about them. If the essence of the game is tainted, you're not giving the consumer the experience they want, and they won't buy your product. It doesn't matter if the game looks pretty, if the experience isn't the same. They'd rather play the old versions from back in the day, or else not play the game at all. Hollywood offers a sobering example of this. 
It has long been said that it has an originality problem. This is a financial issue, I must admit. Hollywood blockbusters these days cost upwards of a hundred million dollars. That's a lot of money to spend on something you aren't sure is going to be a hit. Hence why there are always new Star Wars and Jurassic Park movies coming out. They're guaranteed smashes. But there is also a less sound application of this logic, and that is what I must discuss. In Hollywood, there is a belief that what made money in the past is a surefire bet to make money now. This is why we keep getting this slew of new Frankenstein movies, new King Arthur movies, new Robin Hood movies, new Tarzan movies. For the most part, these movies are awful and fail to capture the spirit of the originals. It's not that audiences inherently don't want movies about King Arthur and Tarzan anymore, it's that these new versions don't get what made the old movies work. Execs are banking that audiences will flock to these films based solely on the name recognition of these brands. And they don't. Bad remasters are rarer, but they have popped up. In the 60s and 70s, there were a lot of attempts to colorize old black and white films. This caused a lot of outrage, and I can see why. Black and white films do have a unique beauty. They were meant to be seen like that. Attempting to colorize them is an offense not just to traditionalists, but also to those like myself who greatly prefer the integrity of the artist's intentions to be maintained. Regardless of the ethics of such a dilemma, some of these colorizations were just plain ugly. It hurt your eyes to look at them. And then, of course, there is the foremost example of bad remastering. George Lucas's Star Wars Special Editions. There were good changes made, but there were also changes that were pointless or downright head-scratching. The most infamous of these being the Han shot first dilemma. The worst problem with what Lucas did isn't that he made these remastered versions, it's that he wanted them to be the only versions of the story. He did what he could to keep the original versions out of people's hands. Audiences wanted a choice, and he wanted to deprive them of one. For gaming, it's a bit more complicated. Film is continually evolving, but on a basic, technical level, what separates old films from new films is slight compared to what separates old games from new. It's not like films from the late 90s had blocky textures and characters that were simplistic polygons. Because of the advances in hardware that are a hallmark of gaming, the gap between an original and a remake or remaster is vast, which makes it even more important that the new versions live up to the essence of the old. But because gaming is a more malleable art form, it is easier to make additions that improve the experience. The core essence must stay in place, but if little upgrades here and there can be made, they should be made. For a remaster such as the Zodiac Age, this means using the best version of the game, the international version, as a baseline, and also going beyond making graphical improvements to offer the player a more complete experience. This isn't betraying the essence of the game, but rather distilling and refining it. For a remake such as what they're doing for Final Fantasy VII, more is required, but again, it must not interfere with what the game is about. The developers have said they want to do more than just tell the same story in the same way, and I fully endorse that. I fully endorse there being more character exploration and backstory than in the original, and I fully endorse more complex, immersive environments. But they should be cautious. I'm a fairly skilled novelist, if I do say so myself. And one of the strategies I use to avoid rambling or saying anything beside what I mean is this. I examine every word I write and see if it adds to the story I'm telling. If it does, I keep it. If not, I write something else. A similar tack would be advisable in this circumstance. For every feature they're thinking about adding, they need to judge whether it adds to the overall experience of playing through the game or whether it's just a distraction that bogs things down. It's a tough bridge to walk, I admit. Final Fantasy VII, because of its popularity, has had a lot of extra material released for it in the form of the Final Fantasy VII compilation. And while most of Crisis Core was good, nearly everything else from that collection is mediocre to terrible. They will need to be very careful crafting this remake. Resting on their shoulders is more than the desires of a million hungry fanboys and girls, but how Final Fantasy VII will be perceived by the next generation. It's been 20 years since the game's original release. If you were 15 when the game originally came out, you're going to be in your late 30s by the time you get your hands on the remake. Many of those who will be playing through the remake never played the original FF7. Hell, they were born after it was released. This is your chance, Square Enix, to shape their perceptions of Final Fantasy VII. Don't mess it up. 
More should be added to the remake of Final Fantasy VII that was added to the Zodiac Age, of course, but the same spirit should be in play. Don't try to reinvent the wheel. Take risks, but respect the source material. Trust it. Add to it without changing too much. These games are being remade and remastered for a reason. Have a keen sense of what you're doing and how it affects the big picture of the games. Whatever you change, make sure you have a reason. And if there's even a question if what you're changing is for the better, review and reflect until there is no doubt. It may not be glamorous, but it pays off. The Zodiac Age is on its way to becoming the definitive way to play Final Fantasy XII, and that's because of more than just the improved graphics. To everyone who's working on the Final Fantasy VII Remake, heed this. If you want your game to become the truly definitive version of Final Fantasy VII, something that does the original game justice while building off it, make sure your changes do more than bring it in line with modern RPGs and put a coating of polish on it. Make sure they stay true to the spirit of the game while distilling and enhancing it. While I wouldn't exactly call myself an expert on Final Fantasy XII, I will say that the game's sequel, Revenant Wings, was the first Final Fantasy game I ever heard of. I had a subscription to Nintendo Power, and there on the cover of Volume 221 was that game. I thought the game looked cool enough. I never thought its franchise would become one of my favorite ever. The most I thought was, Final Fantasy XII, what happened to the first 11? And in good time, I would find out. Anyway, if you liked what you saw today, consider donating to my Patreon so I can produce more amazing content. Also, don't forget to like, comment, subscribe, all that sugar sweet stuff. Adios, comrades!